Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you're looking for an active worm community that is ready and willing to help you achieve your goals as a worm farmer, you're in the right place. Today is about the African nightcrawlers. I'm going to do a quick harvest and then take a look at the beautiful big purple worms and see what they need. Get them fed up. I'm going to do a quick harvest and then take a look at the beautiful worms and see what they need and get them fed up. I have them in a vermi bag, little mammoth, very large surface area, and that is great to house my four pounds of African nightcrawler. It's a continuous flow through system. Stuff goes in the top, comes out the bottom, and you get relatively worm-free castings that do not have any food or anything left in them. So let's do a quick harvest. Let's take a look at those big purple worms. Got my, finally remembered to bring this in the house so that I can get in there a little bit better. I'm looking to get about maybe 10, 20 pounds of the material here. It's uh, time to start amending my raised beds and such so I could use quite a bit of these worm castings. African nightcrawlers do a really great job working through paper as well as kitchen scraps. So looking to get right about here where the zipper is. And then we can knock it back down and we'll have more room to work with at the top of the bin. If you want to go back and look at the uh, whole playlist for this bin, it does have its own playlist, which is probably the only time that you're going to see the divider that is between these two that basically holds everything up. So the goal is to, when I harvest this, not to, distar not to disturb that division bar, because otherwise the whole dang thing would come flying down at me. Now this is, you know, probably 200% better than the urban worm bag that I had, where I basically had to hang upside down, or basically lay on the floor on my back to get my harvest done here. But this one I'm able to sit in a bench. Okay, so then we're done with that half. Then I slide the mortar tray over to this side, unzip this side of the bin, and then I can get my harvest on this side. There's also a video of me making this stand basically to the specifications that I wanted for me to basically cure all the problems that I had when I had the urban worm bag, one of which being harvesting was a huge pain in the butt. So, I made it a little bit taller, which is a little bit more difficult for me to get in there and rummage around the bin, but it makes harvesting so much easier when it's a little farther off the ground. And you can sit on a little footstool and get all this work done. Looks like I'm going to get a full mortar tray this time. Just trying to, yep, that's good. At the end, I'll show you what the castings look like and uh, what there is left over. All right, let's go back up to the top. All right, here we are back at the top. <laughs> So here we are back up at the top. There's a little bit of the worm chow sticking on top here. But my first mission of the day is going to be to uh, take out the heating pad that we've used for the winter. Don't need that anymore. So we'll just kind of get the worms off. But I installed this uh, seed mat in here during the winter to keep the worms, worms warm enough because African nightcrawlers really cannot take any cold weather and by cold weather you know anything under probably 70 degrees fahrenheit i'll go ahead and put the uh 
Celsius up there on the screen. But right now, mission number one is to kind of gather up all the old food to one side and then I'm going to try and knock this down. We just did that harvest, so we need everything to co collapse down. And a little bit of a worm ball there. All right, and then here's a bunch of mites. People have asked about mites. Let me try and hold still so you can see that. But these are helpers in the bin, and if there's a clump of food the worms can't get at, then the mites and the springtails will help them out. So I'm gonna just kind of reach under here a little bit and get everything to fall down so that the bottom of the worm bag is full. So the next time I harvest, it'll be right there against that zipper, which is what we want. So we gained a couple of inches here. I don't want the unfinished food to fall down the cracks. That's why I'm moving it from side to side so that when I knock this down, I don't knock any of the, uh, the new food down there. I just want the finished castings to be down at the bottom. I've tried doing this with all kinds of things from beating on the side of the bin to hitting it with a uh, mop handle. And I still think my hands, just me getting in here, going down the sides, does a better job. Although sometimes beating on the bag, you know, just giving it a few, uh, feels good when you're a little irritated, uh, but I'm not irritated today, so I'm just gonna, you know, get in there. So it's been about four weeks since we've been in here. I have come in and given them some of their worm chow to keep them tied over, because these uh, big guys do not like to be without food for, you know, like a month. If I want them to keep their size like they were when I got them, I have to keep a uh, constant flow of food going in here. They're not like the European night crawlers and the red wigglers where you can just, in my opinion, leave them for about a month. So the moisture is looking a little dry in here. So we'll, we will adjust that as well. Looks like we got a pineapple part in here. We can investigate and see what they're doing. Looks like they've eaten all the fibers out of there and they're getting into the crown. So pineapple is a super slow food. We'll be seeing this for six months at least. But as far as the rest of the food, I'm not seeing anything at all. And with this, you know, these are big worms and you kind of, they eat a lot, let's just put it that way. So if even though I fed them probably four pounds of food, they have gone through it all very, very quickly, especially since it's getting warmer in here and the whole bin is warm instead of just over here where the, the last time that we had put the heat pad in there. So the whole bin is warm, so all of the worms all over the place are eating like mad. All right, let me go get them some food. Okay, so they're going to get some corn leaves that are not cooked. They're also going to get some corn cobs that are uncooked. Most of the time I use the sweet corn, I boil it, but these, I just took the kernels off of the corn cob. So let's see if they go faster this time. I have been told that if you don't cook the corn that it actually goes pretty fast. So. These are completely uncooked. We got some red onions, some apple, banana, peppers, mango. So this is gonna be their people food version of what they're gonna get for today. The second thing that I've been doing to try and keep the African night crawlers large and healthy is to feed them some composted cow manure. So one second, let me go grab that. Okay, so that's probably about a, I don't know, a gallon or maybe, I don't think that's enough. One more. There we go. I've been looking to put about four liters or one gallon in here to uh, just kind of bulk up their nutrition. And uh, now we're gonna get the worm chow. So for me, the worm chow that I make is equal parts wheat flour 
corn, wheat flour, cornmeal, alfalfa meal, and then also ground bird seed. I'm gonna scruff that in, and then I believe they do need a little bit of moisture. I don't think that the corn and, and whatnot is going to be enough for them, so let me go get my watering can. Okay, so here is my watering jug, and because I did not have time to let this sit, I am going to use my fish drops. Um, this is just what you use in a fish tank to clear all the chlorine and chloranamines out of the water to make it fish safe, which is also worm safe. I have a link to this in my Amazon store below. Got my little watering can here. These are really nice because they fit, they kind of stretch to fit on different containers. And basically, turning any sort of one gallon or four liter container or wide mouth container, it even works on like Gatorade. And uh, as you can see, I'm really pouring the water out here and it's not coming off, which is really nice. So I'm gonna put in about a half a gallon. Okay, now that might drip out just a little bit just because I did it really fast. If you don't want it to drip out the bottom, do a little bit at a time, walk away, come back, do it again. But because I have that concrete tray below, it's going to, you know, catch anything that drips out the bottom. All right, now let's get them some bedding to cover all of this up. All right, so my prepared bedding includes about 80% shredded paper and cardboard, and then the rest is shredded paper like junk mail, you know, with the windows taken out, etc. Then there's about 20% coconut coir in there to keep the paper from sticking together. And then usually I have my grit in there, but I didn't have it in there this time, so let me go get some grit. And even if they don't really need this much grit, um, we have someone in our household that eats a couple dozen of eggs a week, so I do not have any problem sourcing ground eggshells. So at the very least, if the worms don't need it, the garden will use it in a couple of months. Okay, let's close them up and we will see what I managed to get from my harvest. Okay, so here we are at the finished tub of castings and I'm going to sift some of them. This is my one quarter inch sifter. I will provide a link below to the Amazon link that uh, is an affiliate link for me. I will get a little bit of a commission, but it will be the same price to you, I promise. And then I'm going to take all of these uh, leftovers, and I'll put them back in on the top. This is also an excellent opportunity just in case something made it through the shredder or something that is not meant to go in the garden, like little bits of plastic or stickers from avocados and such. So anything that doesn't belong, this is a good time to pick it out. So we're getting mostly all of the just really good castings here. And somebody had asked about African night crawlers and how maybe their cocoons are a little stickier or maybe the castings are a little stickier. That might be true because I always have a super hard time finding the castings, nope, finding the cocoons because they're usually stuck to some sort of debris. So uh, good thing I'm not trying to actively look for cocoons because they are difficult to find, at least for me. So if you're interested in African Nightcrawlers or the Vermi Bag series, I do have a playlist that I will link right over there. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks that you're going to like this video right over there. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.